Welcome back to the Coliseum. Game time weather this afternoon is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free and the boardwalk is open daily. It's a beautiful 77 degrees under sunny skies for the final game of this free game series. A's and the White Sox. That's right, folks. That's Bob Guerin, the manager of the Oakland A's. And he's about to turn over a lot of cars. Suit in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and thanks to George Zimmer, the men's warehouse, for... Uh, Providing the suit for Bob Guerin. You know, George always says he guarantees it. Let's hope he guarantees a win today. Yeah. And he's 29. You know, in 29, the Athletics won 104 games. Uh -huh. What a World Series against the Chicago Cubs. So maybe this can be one of those. But uh, we thank the men's warehouse for that. Here's the White Sox lineup today. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Scott Podsednik will lead off in left field, followed by Gordon Beckham, Jermaine Dye, Jim Tomey. Big home run yesterday, number 563 in his career. Alex Rios is in center, A.J. Brzezinski behind the plate. Lexi Ramirez, a big series, he's at shortstop. Mark Kotze is at first. Jason Nix is the second baseman. Defensively for the Athletics, Harrison Davis and Cunningham in the outfield. Kennedy, Crosby, Ellis, and Everidge around the infields. Bobby Crosby start at shortstop today. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. And Trevor Cahill is trying to break a four-game losing streak. As he looks for win number seven. Well, he pitched well against the Baltimore's in his last start, although he did pick up a loss, did not give up a home run, did not walk a batter. Twelve ground ball outs, and as we showed in that game when we televised right here on uh, Comcast Sports Net California, that uh, he gave up the three runs on three ground balls. That happened to make it in the outfield, one on an infield uh, ground ball that a run scored. But Trevor Cahill, 25th start for the young man, and he'd like to pitch well today against the White Sox. He's already faced back in Chicago on the 1st of June. A.J. Przezinski homer. He went uh, five and two-thirds, just three hits and two runs. First pitch. 107. So Scott Podsednik leading things off. Podsednik in the left field. Podsednik, Beckham, and Die. Against Trevor Cahill. The bunt attempt. Kennedy picks it up, throws to first, just in time to get Pod Sednik, and that's the first out. Let's listen to our public address announcer, Dick Callahan, downstairs. Batting in the second position, third baseman, number 15, Gordon Beckham. Dick located right down by the A's dugout today. I don't think they had diamond vision back in 29. They'd have a lot of things at 29, except a very good baseball team. Beckham swings at the first pitch, hits it hard to third. Kennedy takes care of that one, two outs. Well, lost uh, as we were going to Dick Callahan. was a good play by Adam Kennedy on a good bunt by Scott Pizednik leading off. A little confusion, almost a collision between the pitcher and third baseman Adam Kennedy. But Kennedy very smoothly picked it up as we take a look at a very nice play. Pizednik, outstanding speed. And Cahill almost got to it. Fortunately, he did not because it was an easier play for the charging Adam Kennedy. Now, he could play in 29. I mean, there's no doubt. Yep. Just looking at him, he could do it. Tommy Everidge, we figured that uh, Tommy time yeah. would have been a good time. He's He's got the look. <laughs> Big boy. Yeah, he could, uh, he could have played in 29. Looks like Babe Ruth a little bit. That's right. <laughs> That's great. Jermaine Dye skies one. Left field line. Hairston's got it. And Trevor Cahill has a three up, three down, top of the first inning. He's coming to bat, bottom of the first, no score.
Ace come to bat, bottom of the first. Their lineup looks like this. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Kennedy, Davis, Suzuki, Hairston, Garcia, Parr, the DH, and then Crosby, Everidge, Ellis, and Cunningham. John Danks, the very good left-hander for the White Sox on the mound this afternoon. Danks first pitch to Kennedy is in first strike. So the White Sox wearing the throwback uniforms as well. And their unis look pretty good too. Nice and simple. Yeah. Nice cap. Steve Husnich, of course, is the equipment manager, had all the uniforms, both sides, and took a look at the caps. A, a very sharp looking Chicago White Sox cap. Toward Ramirez, who charges and throws, and that's the first down. White Sox behind John Danks. Have Pod Sednik in left, Rios in center, die in right. Batting at third, Ramirez at short, Nicks at second, Katze at first. A.J. Brzezinski is the catcher. John Danks, 10 game winner for the Chicago White Sox. And how about against the A's? With a 4 0 record, three wins last year against the A's, with a 138 ERA career against the A's. So, A's trying to avoid a sweep, not necessarily the great as pitcher you want to try to end the streak against, the way Janks has pitched against the A's. But as we can say, that's in the past. This is today. This is 29. Let's we'll see how it fares. Rajay Davis probably wasn't playing in those years. The uh, numbers for Danks against. The athletics Rajay has really ignited this A's club. Up and in two and one to Davis. 294 overall with a couple of home runs and 25 runs batted in. He's also sitting on a 10 game hitting streak. 15 hits and 43 at bats during the stretch. When pitches foul back. So full count. Kurt Suzuki in the on deck circle. There's the, the giveaway today. The 1929 uniform. Another pop up and just out of the reach of a hustling Mark Katze. White Sox with a 60 and 57 record with their first two wins in this series. <laughs> Ozzie is an amazing manager. Just a bit low, and it's a walk. So Davis is a walk. No, Ozzie does a lot of talking during the game. I wonder how much of it is Bob's baseball. I mean, he just you know, he is energetic. He's <laughs> umpires today. Bill Hahn is behind home plate. Paul Emmel at first. Gary Darling at second. Todd Tishner at third. Well, the umpires should have come going back to 29 as well. Had the uh, outside chest protector. Yeah. Uh, Throw back really with the balloon protector. Suzuki blocks the button and takes a strike. Two eighty for Kurt, nine home runs and fifty three runs batted in. In this series, he's one for eight with a walk. John Dex is not overpowering with his fastball, but has a, an assortment of pitches. Complements his fastball with a curveball slider and changeup, but fastball just a low 90s, tops out to about 91, but very good control. Except for the walk to Rajay Davis. He's just 23 years old. So Danks, good young pitcher and a big part of the White Sox future. The White Sox got Danks in a trade. From the Texas Rangers. It was exchanged for Brandon McCarthy. And 
that is not a good trade no. for the Texas Rangers folks. Brandon McCarthy has barely pitched at all. And this guy is a very good young starting pitcher. On the ground, it could be two. Ramirez flips in the dirt, but dug out by Mark Kotze. Side retired. 4-6-3 on the double play. We played an inning at Coliseum elsewhere. Here's our Subway Eat Fresh Ask Glenn and Ray question. Came in in Milpitas. Well, we just talked about it. Don't you think the umpire should wear throwback uniforms during throwback games? That's what Keeman wants to know. And we just said, yeah, we agree. I'm sure the umpires <laughs> completely agree with us, especially home plate umpire Bill Hahn. Get to hold up that big, big balloon for big pillow for what three hours yes and uh, definitely a high strike umpire because they never bent over like the <laughs> umpires with the inside chest protectors toming rios and Brzezinski here in the second inning for the white Sox. yeah they might have had the umpire behind the pitcher in 29 I've seen some games in spring training where they <laughs> had an umpire. This you don't see the pitches very well. I'll be like our center field camera. Yeah. And Jim Tomey in the record books after Edgar Gonzalez with his recoil. It recoiled all right, right over the 367 mark, right below the Reggie Jackson number nine. Retired here at the Coliseum. The gentleman that he tied. With his 563rd home run, Reginald Martinez Jackson. 2 2 pitch on the inside corner, strike three call. Good pitch by Cahill. Didn't know if Bill Hahn was going to make the call. Looked like a great pitch to Jim Tomey as he waited. And so did Bill Hahn, and finally gave the call. Perfectly thrown inside corner. Jim Tomey, a great eye, but that time took it, and it was strike three. Alex Rios is the hitter. So Trevor Cahill, just one win in his last nine starts. But he was coming off a pretty good start in his last one. As Ray talked about, two outs as Rios flies the center. 97 pitches. And the final score in that game, three to two. So he pitched well. And no doubt the 12 ground ball out is very important for Trevor Cahill. And I think we're seeing the development of a very good young pitcher. And anybody can throw a sinker ball pitch and get ground ball outs. 
He doesn't have to be overpowering as long as he has the movement and it gets the ground ball outs. He's going to win a lot of games for the A's. Couple of hits yesterday for A.J. Berzinski hitting 312. He pinch hit on Friday night and then stayed in the game. So we got a couple of at bats in the first game of the series. White Sox won 8 7 on Friday, 8 to 1 yesterday. So an offense that was struggling coming into this series has come to life. White Sox with 16 runs and 23 hits in the first two games of this series. Broken bat. Crosby waits and then quickly throws. Everidge digs it out. Side retired. Six up, six down for Trevor Cahill. No score. Bottom of the second coming up. Bottom of the second inning, no score. The White Sox and the Athletics. And afternoon where we're celebrating 1929 when the A's won the World Series. Best record in the majors during the regular season, 104 and 46. And then in five games, they beat the Chicago Cubs in the World Series. And the A's won the World Series in 29. They won it again in 30. And then they went back to the World Series in 31 and lost in seven games to the Cardinals. But it was a Pretty good three year run for the Philadelphia A's. Scott Hairston, a line drive over the head of Ramirez, and that's a base hit. In that World Series against the Cubs, there were some great players. Those names, all Hall of Famers for the A's Cochran, Fox, Simmons, Collins, Grove, the Cubs, some great names, and both the managers. Connie Mack and Joe McCarthy, all in the Hall of Fame and all participated in that 1929 World Series. That's Jimmy Fox, the picture. <laughs> the beast. <laughs> His grandson threw out one of the first pitches today. When you look at Jimmy Fox's career number, and remember this was a time when Babe Ruth was hitting home runs, but not a lot of other people were hitting home runs. Maybe at 46 that year. Yeah. Got to the 500 mark as we uh, talked about in Baltimore on the actual day when he hit his 500th. Garcia Park to left center. Pod Sednik reaches out, makes the catch. Hairston tags, but goes back to first. Well, the home run leaders in 1929 in the American League 46 for Babe, 35 for Lou Gehrig, and then a couple of the Athletics, Fox, and Simmons. Jimmy Fox, a couple of years later, 1932, hit 58 home runs. 58. 
So that this must have been about the time, Ray, where home runs did start to come into play. But still, nothing like you know, nowadays. Oh, <laughs> but you know, really, the, in the 20s, there was not a lot of home well, runs. Well, 27, Murderers Row. Yeah. Uh, we went with uh, the Yankees. They, they probably were there, but that was mostly Ruth and Gary. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, you're right, kind of the end of the dead ball era and beginning of home runs, and definitely more so today. But you could go back in those years and find out how many relievers they had. Starters went nine or ten or twelve or fourteen, however many the innings the game was played. Hey, you wonder how many how many pitchers were on a pitching staff back then? Well, since the A's we had nine. Hmm. Four man staff. Uh, yeah, starters that's the seventies. So yeah. you start thinking about the twenties and thirties, did they have six, seven, eight? Huh? Well, 154 game schedule. Crosby hits it hard on the ground. It's going to be a double play for the White Sox. 6 4 3. So, a pair of double plays in the first two innings for the White Sox. We head to the third. No score. Nineteen twenty-nine. We went to the ballpark. I've seen guys playing some music, walking around. Who knows? They're doing it today. I like the Diamond Vision here at the Coliseum is in black and white. Lexi Ramirez reaches out, pokes in the left field, but playable for Scott Hairston, and that's the first down. We're talking about some of the hitters on that great Philadelphia A's team. But pitching staff was led by Lefty Grove. See where they're warming up? Right next to the dugout. That's right. I actually I started my career in Yankee Stadium with you. I mean, it was that unbelievable. That was pretty common, oh, though, right? Yeah. Starting pitcher warm up right in front of the fans, right by the dugout. Twenty-seven complete games in 1931. <laughs> Lefty Grove. Kind of uh, finished what they started. Triple crowd. Won a game one or eight time. And he got to 300 career wins. Bob Guerin, back in uniform. He had the suit on. Compliments of our good friends at the men's warehouse. But Trey, I know you're a big fan of the men's warehouse. Absolutely. Actually, so am I. 
George Zimmer, the men's warehouse, big sponsor of the A's warm up for many, many years. Matter of fact, as long as I've been doing it, and of course, uh, some very nice suits. And the A's skipper Bob Guerin was donning one of the suits from the men's warehouse today. Katze checks his swing. Of course, that was Connie Mack. He wore a suit. Yes, he did. But the rule was established that uh, cannot do that in today's game. And Connie Mack never went out on the field. Right. And you can't do that if you're not in proper uniform. We talked about this a couple, what, maybe a month or so ago. <laughs> Connie Mack used to send somebody else out to make the pitching change because he had to. There's the manager I have to check the stores to see if they have those uh, those hats. I mean, that's a pretty nice looking hat. That's the A's cap, but Skipper looked good in his suit. Line drive and Cunningham plays it on the short hop. So Marcotte with a base hit. So that's the first hit for the White Sox as KL had retired the first seven hitters. Marcotte aboard. Number five. Jason Got the first three ball count to Kotze and the first hit. Jason Nix, who hit first yesterday in the lineup, against Joe Gonzalez, hit a big two run home run off the foul pole in left field. Get the White Sox on the board early. Hanging 0 2 curveball. So for Nix, that was his, is his only hit in the series, but it was a big one. If I'm these players, I'd say I want to take the uniform oh, home with me. No keep question. The That's be a good one to keep. Nix drives one deep, but foul. Well into the second deck. Well, you saw how hard that was hit. This one was hit hard yesterday down the line. It was just a matter of fair or foul. Foul pole, fair pole, home run. It was hit too hard to hook in front of the pole. That man's got some pop as he just showed. The pop by forms. He's got a brother who plays with his Reds, I think, right? Grounded to Crosby. It's a nice big hop. And that's a double play. 6 4 3. The third double play in the ball game combined for the two teams. Bottom of the third coming up, no score. Next Saturday, the A's will host the Detroit Tigers. That'll be the final weekend of this big homestand game. Time 6.05. Stick around afterwards for the post-game fireworks show. And it's brought to you by Chevron. Get tickets online at OaklandAthletics.com or call 877-493-BALL. Next Saturday, against the Tigers, another fireworks show here at the Coliseum. Tommy Everidge just swing and a miss. One and one the count. So Yankees Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 
Eagles. Tigers come in for the weekend, an off day on Thursday. So long homestand for the Athletics, nine games total. And against three pretty good teams, obviously. The Yankees coming in, and they are smoking hot. That'll be start tomorrow. Three and one to average. Pops a foul back. Some of the games just starting to go final or close to going final. White Sox will keep a close eye on the Tigers, and the Tigers just lost three to two to the Kansas City Royals in Detroit. Swing and a miss by Average. A change up on three and two, and that shows you the way John Danks likes to pitch. Instead of challenging big Tommy Time, he went with a change up at 84 and had him way out in front on a swing and miss. Good, good pitch from Danks, and excellent change up. Mark Ellis steps in and takes the strike. So with that Tiger loss, the White Sox right now are two games back in the AL Central. Detroit was going for the sweep of the Royals, but could not pull it off. John Danks, as we are seeing today, is kind of in the Mark Burley pitching mode, and that is get the ball and throw it. Burley, of course, never takes a lot of time. John Danks, another lefty, similar style of pitching. Right field, Jermaine Dye over, and he is just into foul territory. He makes the catch. So Mark Ellis is retired, two outs. Nobody. So a long run for Dye, but he was able to get there. Aaron Cunningham. <laughs> 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 Young man, I think. He doesn't realize it's actually a microphone because he's trying to yell so everybody can hear without, without the microphone. <laughs> yeah. A couple of young kids doing the PA announcing for Dick Callahan. I think he's got job security today. Numbers for Aaron Cunningham so far this year. Really got a chance to play a whole lot when he has been in the big league. Cunningham seven hits in 50 at bats. That one on the ground and it's going to get through in the left field. The base hit. Second hit for the A's. Comes with two outs here in the bottom of the third, and now the top of the order, Adam Kennedy. Just found the hole on the low fastball, went out of the strike zone, and raked it past Beckham at third. So Adam Kennedy will hit. Kennedy grounded out to short in the first inning. Pretty good performance yesterday, huh, yeah. Adam Kennedy? Five hits and not one was uh, farther than left center. Everything to right or left field. It was four singles and a double for Kennedy. Captain Sal Bando in 1969, the only other he's played to hit five hits in two different games in the season. July 28th at Boston was when Kennedy had his other five-hit game. So the average with the 0 for 1 today, right at 290 for Kennedy. He drills this one to left. Getting back is Potsetna, and he's got it side retired. 
Fourth inning coming up from the Coliseum. No score. Even some of the fans are getting in the festivities today, which makes it kind of fun. Throwback uniforms from 1929. You're just joining us. It was the year the A's won their fourth World Series. They won five total well in Philadelphia. And of course, the four here in Oakland. And there are the five in Philadelphia. Three and zero oh to Scott Podsednik, the leadoff hitter. And there are the four championships in Oakland. The only difference across the bay when you go into AT&T Park, you see their 54 World Championship. You don't see anything currently. No, that was in New York. Still looking. That is just fouled on the first baseline. So full count to Podsednik. He'll be followed by Beckham and Dye. Podsednik bounced out to third. I'll take that back. Actually, bunted and was thrown out by Kennedy. Mark Ellis will take care of it here. So Podsednik is over two. So what else happened in 1929? Oh, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Al Capone flexing his muscles a little bit. Told the, the Bay Bridge. Actually, not the Bay Bridge, the San Mateo Bridge. But at that time, it was called the San Francisco Bay Toll Bridge. I didn't realize the San Mateo Bridge had been there that long. John Herbert Hoover was inaugurated as president, and of course, uh, not a particularly great year to be inaugurated, considering <laughs> Black Thursday and stock market crash. And appropriately, as Babe Ruth said, I'm told that he made more money than the president, he had a better year, and that's definitely why, because Babe Ruth was hitting home runs, his 500th to be exact, 46 that year as we showed, but the country was not in very good shape. Good pitch on two and one right on the outside court. Two and two to Beckham. And now full count. Beckham grounded out to third in his first at bat. And he lines one down the left field line, and that's going to one off the wall. 
Beckham digging for second and he will make it there. So Gordon Beckham his 22nd double this year and he's only played in 64 games. Number 23. Well, who was Your born in 1929? Names that you certainly recognize. Oh, the great Bob Newhart was born in 1929. Arnold Palmer. See Dick Clark. Well, we know how old Barbara Walters is now, don't we? If we really <laughs> needed to know that or wanted to. Let's see, all those people are 80, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Jermaine Dyes had a good series, four for nine, with four RBIs. And Cahill falls behind Dye, two and zero. Oh. It's against Cahill in Chicago that Jermaine Dye. I'd seen some video and saw that he liked to throw the two seam fastball down and in, and that's when he opened up and hit a base hit to left field. So far, the first two pitches in this at bat, staying away from. Jermaine die, especially with a runner in score position. Scoreless game, big run. As both pitchers, two hits is all they've given up. Die gets out in front. Hairston will have a place fighting the sun, still fighting it, and he makes the catch. And a sigh of relief after being able to corral that one. Not easy in the sun there kind of turns to the side trying to have the ball come out of the sun and there it comes finally as it starts to come down and he's looking looking and boy that is so hard and of course at second base Beckham didn't know if he's going to catch it or not so the quick throw back but that was what <laughs> Harrison was looking up into it a very very tough sun. It's going to be a bad feeling. Huh? <laughs> Inside to Tommy. Well, a very good changeup was thrown to Jermaine Dye to get him to pop up to run at second. Tommy struck out looking. That was in the second inning. The only strikeout so far for KL. We showed you Tommy on the all time home run list, now tied with Reggie for 12. He's also 11th on the all time walks list and 39th on the all time RBI list. He has 1,558 RBIs and 1,616 walks. So, all that, and he will strike out a lot as well. He's closing in on 2,300 strikeouts. But he should be going to the Hall of Fame. Because he's going to get to 600 home runs. Well, the White Sox have a decision to make whether they would like to bring him back. He is a free agent at the end of the year. He's got a big contract. He's making this year 13 million. But he can hit. There's no question about it. Jam there pops it up and Adam Kennedy makes the catch side retired so Beckham's one out double does not hurt Trevor Cahill bottom of the fourth coming up no score.
Bottom of the fourth, no scores. Rajay Davis will lead things off. Davis, Suzuki, and Hairston. So Danks and Cahill, two pitchers today. That's a security guard closing the gate in left field near the Ricky Henderson retired jersey and just casually, Sunday stroll, walking back. And meanwhile, well, everybody's. Did break into a little bit of a shot. Yeah. Beckham on the backhand. He was playing even with the bag and he makes the play. Davis is out. Well, that was some great shots from 1929. And you would never know the difference, right? <laughs> Good looking uniforms. So here's Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki hit into a four six three double play. Seventh game in the starting lineup. And this is game number 117 for the A's. Be a backup catcher for the A's, you're probably not going to play it. But when Landon Powell does, he excels. It's unbelievable yes, what he's been doing. The second baseman, Nix, calls off Katze for the second out. So Scott Hairston will hit. So two outs in the fourth inning. Danks's pitch count is only 44. Both he and Cahill have been very sharp in the ball game. Hairston swings at the first pitch. It's a fly ball. Right field. Long run for Die, and he's going to get there in fair territory. And he makes the catch. So a six pitch inning for Jim. Alex Rios will lead things off for the White Sox. Trevor Cahill has allowed just two hits. He's not walked anybody, and he has struck out just one. His pitch count is 51. Well, coming off a game against the Orioles, he did not walk a batter in that game. Which I'd like to see Trevor Cahill, of course, for 
sure there's some concern about the young starting pitchers who have started the season with the athletics and Cahill and Anderson, the two that have stayed in the rotation. There's got to be some concern about the number of innings and pitching this time of the year. Because typically minor leaguers will be finished pitching or playing by the end of August, except for some playoffs. Way outside. See 25 starts for Cahill, 22 for Anderson. Rios hits one very high center field. Davis trots in. And Rajay Davis has it. So that's the first out here in the fifth inning. Well, finally, we got in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. It's Sportsnet Central tonight at 6 o'clock on our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. It's presented by Burger King. And also, for those who are fortunate, today's game is high definition. to be able to watch this game in high definition. And uh, those of you who are not, you're missing a good game because these uniforms really look sharp. And you can imagine how much better they don't look. And high definition. Nice blue. Except for the green shoes. If Steve Ustich could just could not get <laughs> black shoes. I know that Mark Ellis said these would have looked great with black shoes. Well, Steve Ustich and uh, he's putting together the uniforms of the 29 athletics. The black shoes the White Sox are wearing. The A's, the white shoes. Brzezinski rolls it foul, so one and two the count. You know, Ray, talking about the innings with A.J. Brzezinski, or with Trevor Kale, last year in the minor leagues, 124. Coming into today's start, 133. So certainly you're going to. As the each year you'd like to increase, what do they say, 25 percent? 20 to 25 percent. But with this being game number 117, so you still have quite a few games left. Ellis first, Brzezinski's out. Well, that's a great pitch. Got the off speed pitch away from Brzezinski, and he rolled over an easy ground ball to Ellis. So the pitch selection today by Trevor Cahill, Kurt Suzuki, so far is very good. Watch Brzezinski fooled on this pitch away from him, change up, just reached out. He does not strike out a lot, does not walk a lot. That pitch clearly off the plate as the Tommy Cam showing. A high home shot, but a good play by Mark Ellis. Brzezinski doesn't run well, so a good second out. Swing and a miss, and the good changeup is Ramirez way out in front. And another one, and another swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Now the question is, would you go and throw it again? <laughs> if he throws it in the same location, he'd get the same swing and miss. Great delivery, great arm speed with a change up, and velocity is about 12 miles lower. He did. That time, a fastball that Ramirez just got a piece of. Stand with a changeup. Ramirez hit a fly ball to left field in his first at bat. So three for seven in the series. And of course, one of those hits the home run that was the difference in the game. And another changeup. And Trevor Cahill, a very impressive fifth inning, picks up his strike, strike, second strikeout to end it.
Bottom of the fifth inning, Nomar Garcia Parra steps in. He'll be followed by Crosby and then Everidge. John Danks has allowed just a couple of hits. One walk, one strikeout so far. Hairston a single, Cunningham a single. Those are the two hits for the A's. Good pitching matchup so far. And a good changeup from Danks, one and two. All of a sudden, been, uh, two pitchers throwing nothing but changeups. And they're all good ones, yes. I've always thought a left-hander had a, an exceptional changeup. Kind of a pitcher can throw any time he wants to. Something about the faces predominantly right-handed hitters and the way the ball tails away from the right-handers. So the one-two. And that time Garcia Parra got a changeup and he reached out and pokes it into center field. Now the Tigers will be coming to the Coliseum. For a three-game series starting this Friday, August the 21st, game time 7:05, and 15,000 fans will get a Jason Giambi collectible bobblehead. And it's brought to you by the San Jose Mercury News. Get tickets online, OaklandAthletics.com, or call 877-493-BALL. This Friday, Tigers in town following an off day on Thursday, preceded by the arrival of the New York Yankees tomorrow night for a three-game series. Second time in the A's, the A's get their leadoff hitter on. Bobby Crosby, I wonder if he had a double take when he looked at the lineup today and saw a shortstop. Cliff Pennington has been in the lineup every game that Pennington has been in the big leagues this year. So, sure Bob Guerin felt maybe time to give Pennington a day off. 27 starts at third base, 21 at first. Today, just the second at shortstop for Crosby. it up and it's going to be foul. Oh, this is Luke Hochaver. Last Sunday at Kansas City Kaufman Stadium, a two home run game, change up the opposite field. A game I'm sure that one of these days Tyler Joseph Crosby will look at and say, that's my dad. He's a couple of months old, so he may not realize what's going on right now. <laughs> he will. <laughs> he will for sure. Bobby strikes out there. Another off-speed pitch from Danks. So that is the second strike now for the left-hander. Well, Bobby got a 2-0 fastball. He swung and foul, pulled foul and figured as he got deeper in the count, he was going to get the change up for Danks, and it has been a good one. One away for Tommy Everidge. Zitsky comes back and he's going to run out of room. Drops him in the second row. Got a wild game going on in Baltimore, Ray. The Angels and the Orioles are tied at eight. Going to the bottom of the 11th. It was 8 7. Angels with one out in the ninth. Nobody on base. Adam Jones hit a home run on Brian Fuentes to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Adam Jones didn't do much against the A's no. earlier in the week. Hot Sednik in and over, he makes the catch. But then in the top of the 11th, the Angels had the bases loaded in one out and could not score. So the Orioles are coming to bat in the bottom of the 11th. And well, speaking of Sorry. Angels and former Angels, yesterday Francisco Rodriguez to Benja Molina. Yeah. And a wild, unfortunate game for David Wright, and we hope. He is okay after being hit in the helmet. 
by Matt Cain, and no doubt unintentional. Nobody's going to be throwing up that high as hard as Matt Cain throws, but fortunately one got away and hit him in the head. Line drive by Mark Ellis. Hot Sednik over. Bobbles it. Now Garcia Power is going to try for third. He'll make it as the throw goes to second. So first and third, two outs for the A's for Aaron Cunningham. And Mark Ellis jumping on the first pitch, and why not? Gets a fastball up on the zone, and John Danks has to be happy this ball didn't leave the park. Mark Ellis swinging down on the ball, a little bobble by Potsednik, and very smart, and that's just a smart outfield play. Instead of thinking about the runner going to third, he came up throwing immediately second base, and he held Ellis at first. First pitch, Cunningham pops it up. Nix is going to make the catch in shallow center field, and the A's do not score. Sixth inning coming up from Oakland, no score. A's fans, it's time for... Sixth inning, no score. A's and White Sox. Right now, the bullpen doesn't need to be in too much of a concern. Both starting pitchers have been outstanding. As Trevor Cahill back to work against Kotze, Nix, and Podsednik. Kotze had a base hit in his first at bat. Game just went final down in Texas. And that was a big series, and the Texas Rangers hung on today and beat the Boston Red Sox four to three. It's a line drive by Mark Kotze down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Kotze is going to try for two. Cunningham's throw is offline, and Mark Kotze has a hustle double to lead off the sixth. The White Sox, after Mark Kotze was let go by the Boston Red Sox, five. were able to pick up a veteran who could play center field. He could also play first base. And he could also hit, as we saw when he's with the Athletics, and going for a double all the way on this ball in the right field. So with the game in the sixth inning, we'll see how the White Sox handle the leadoff double. Nicks to bunt, bunts it toward Kennedy. Kennedy's throw just in time, so sacrifice gets Kotze to third with one out. But the reason we mentioned that Rangers score is with the Number win, 22. Texas takes over 
the lead in the AL wild card. How about that? So the Rangers, remember, they lost an absolute heartbreaker on Friday night, but they came back and won 7-2 to two yesterday and 4-3 to three today over the Red Sox. So Texas is now the leader in the AL wild card. You see Tampa Bay on there. The Rays won their game, so they picked up a half a game. Well, the A's hoping for another ground ball. Off the bat of Pitsednik with the infield playing in. Pitsednik runs well, so bottom line, gets the ball through the infield. He's taking the chance that he hits him at one of the A's infielders. I wouldn't take a chance on trying to get Gordon Beckham because he's been pretty yeah. hot. There's a line shot left center field, and that's going to roll all the way to the wall. Run scores. Potsednik digging around second. He's trying for third, and he will make it with a head first slide. RBI triple by Potsednik, and the White Sox take the lead, 1 0. Well, he's thinking three all the way, and Pitch got no, up, and Potsednik, as we have seen in this game so far, he is not taking a lot of pitches. And, of course, with one out, he wanted to get to third, and as soon as he hit it, that's what he was thinking about. He has the speed to be able to do it all on his own with the ball in front of him. And this might be the longest head first slide I've ever seen. And it worked for him. So here's Beckham, infield in again. For Pod Sednik, his 34th run batted into the year. Gordon Beckham, a ground out and a double so far in the game. He's 6 for 11 in the series. Swing and a miss. A 2 0 changeup, and Beckham chased it. On deck is Jermaine Dye. A leadoff double by Kotze sacrifices to third, and Podsednik triples him home. Might as well throw him another changeup, because that seems to be the pitch that's working best for. Trevor K. Held is thanks for some run support. He's trying to prevent the second run from scoring. Beckham takes it, and it was a changeup, and it's low. First walk issued by K. Hill is number 23, Jermaine Dye. Did have a base to work with. A couple to work with, but now he can work on die, see if he can get a good sinker, and maybe die hit into a double play. But also, die obviously a big RBI man. Jay Marshall starts to throw. So the lefty gets up. After die, it will be Jim Tomey. Pitch count is okay for Trevor Cahill, but I think we're looking at innings and situation right now where it's kind of a, a short leash in a sense if a pitcher starts to struggle. A number of innings that uh, Cahill has thrown and will continue to throw. I think he's a ground ball away from just keeping this one one run game. Pitch is high to Jermaine Dye. A couple of flyouts today for Dye. It's four for ten in the series. Pud setting a third, Beckham at first. And Dye goes around, says Paul Emmel.
Main Dye is thinking about driving in this run and a little aggressive on the pitch out of the strike zone. I guess if you're a hitter Ray and an RBI guy like Jermaine Dye, you're looking for something maybe a little up in the strike zone, right? Looking Sacrifice for up or anything close to play that he can reach. He will definitely expand the strike zone to try to drive the run in. And of course, Cahill. He's looking to do the exact opposite. He's looking for something down in the strike zone for Die to swing it. And hopefully get a ground ball. So that's the cat and mouse game between pitcher and hitter. Three one. And it runs inside. It was a three one changeup. And Kale showing a little frustration on the mound. The bases are now loaded for Jim Tomey. The lefty Jay Marshall is warming up. Number 25, Jim Tomek. The splits for Tomey this year 232 against left handed pitching, 259 versus right handed pitching. And he drives one center field. Davis sets up. Tagging up is Podsednik. The throw is going to be cut off by Everett. Throw to third and not quite in time. Run scores. Beckham to third. So it's a sacrifice fly for Jim Tomey. And the White Sox have a 2 nothing lead. Now the throw should have gone straight to third without going to the cutoff man. The A's might have had a chance to get Beckham. They were not going to get Podsednik. And what Rajay did was correct. He hit the cutoff man. But the throw, it took an extra throw to try to get Beckham going to third. Sometimes you just concede the run. In this case, she had to with Budsednik. Now, when you're an outfielder, Ray, and you're out there by yourself, is anybody yelling at you to tell you where to throw, or are, there, are your teammates too far away from you? They're too far away, and basically it's. The knowledge of how deep the ball's been hit and who's running. The biggest key is who's running. And but said it was going to try regardless. And I just think the ball was too deep, and it's something the outfielder just has to plan ahead in the event the ball is hit. Where are the runners going to advance? And you can look up and see Beckham taking off, and that would have been the player to get. Davis going back. He's got room. He makes the catch. Side retired. Couple of runs for the White Sox. Bottom of the sixth coming up. 2 0 Chicago. Throwback day at the Coliseum. Going back to 1929. You know what we have 
here in 2009 is a pretty good baseball game. Unfortunately, the White Sox got a pair of runs in the top of the sixth inning, so they lead two to nothing. Each team with four hits. There has not been an error in the game. Top of the order for the Athletics, Kennedy, Davis, and Suzuki. He's had a couple of runners on in the fifth, stranded them both against Danks. Kennedy, a ground ball to short and a fly ball to left. It's jammed. Nix comes in, makes the catch. Is there anything that frustrates a hitter more than uh -huh. that? Probably not. And this was today's first pitch. One, two, three. Is it the granddaughter and the grandson? Is that right? Uh, Connie Mack. Yes. Right. Yeah. But Jimmy Fox's grandson. Grandson. Right. Excuse me while I have a dib. <laughs> I should never ask Ray a question <laughs> mid dib. <laughs> Between dibs and high, defi high definition TV on Comcast Sportsnet California, what more could you ask? It's a good day. Plus, when was the last time you wore a baseball uniform? Rajay Davis with a one out hit. Well, even better to put on a uniform and not have to play. <laughs> That's, That's even right. Better. Put on the uniform and announce. How many? That was the giveaway today, and we got to. And we're still wearing the couple extra uniforms that Steve Usinich had downstairs, and he gave us a couple to wear. So yeah. they are pretty awesome. Yeah, Brian Davis just said, make sure you don't get anything on them. <laughs> Right. See, I, I promise I dip. won't get anything on him when I take it home with me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do that. Suzuki, right center, Rios got a good jump when he makes the catch. So Kurt Suzuki 0 for 3. Well, the A's are helping John Danks because Danks is helping himself throwing strikes, but the A's swing an early in the count. Last inning after Everidge. Flew out to the outfield and a base hit by Elliston Cunningham, all first pitch hitting. So within a matter of three pitches, the A's had runners at first and third, but Danks got out of the inning. But it helps if he throws strikes and mixed pitches, change speeds. And Danks has done all that today. Hairston has a base hit, one for two. Still playing in Baltimore. It's now in the 12th inning, bottom of the 12th, 8-8. Eight, eight. Told you a couple innings ago the Angels had the bases loaded and one out, did not score. They just had the bases loaded and one out again in the 12th and did not score. And they were had a one-run lead going to the bottom of the ninth, and the Orioles tied it. Orioles scored 16 off yeah. the Angels of Friday. The Rangers won, so if, if the Orioles were to win that game, the Angels' lead would be down to three and a half in the AL West. There's White Sox and Tigers in the middle of their own battle in the AL Central. White Sox and Tigers will play six more games against each other, three at home and three away, including the final weekend of the 2009 season. There'll be a three-game series in Detroit. Davis goes. Brzezinski's throw. No chance. Davis with a stolen base. And a good read on Danks. And Raja has number 24, sixth most in the American League. One away from his uh, season high last year. Brzezinski with a quick release, but Raja just 
as Ricky Henderson would say, 85% of the time on the pitcher, and that was one of the 85%. 3 0 pitch down around the knees called the strike. Got to be a little fun for Hawk Harrelson, longtime broadcaster for the White Sox. And Scott Harrison, the, his dad, playing for the White Sox when Hawk broadcast. There is Hawk, along with Mike Huff, sitting in for Steve Stone on the weekend. But the Hawk, longtime broadcaster, 20th season with the White Sox. Got Jerry Harrison, the father of Scott, and Jerry Jr. We'll see him tomorrow. We'll see him tomorrow for sure. Terry Harrison Jr. So the A's cannot get Davis home after his single and his stolen base. So two nothing after six. Through Sunday, visit CashCreek.com for details. Beautiful afternoon for baseball at the Coliseum. He's need a win to avoid the sweep. But right now, the White Sox with a two-nothing lead. Trevor Cahill has pitched very well. He just ran into some trouble in the sixth inning, and that's when the White Sox got their two runs. Here in the seventh, Brzezinski, Ramirez, and Katze. Cahill at 88 pitches. And he's got a quick 0 2 on the White Sox catcher. Left center Davis goes back and it is going to be off the top of the wall. Brzezinski hustling in the second with a stand up double. Now the sixth inning got started with the leadoff double and that's the same thing that happens here in the seventh. And that was on an 0 2 pitch. Well, you look at the location of the pitch. It was supposed to be down and in. Look at the location. Kind of in the middle of the plate but a little bit up and that's what happened with Patsednik last inning when he tripled the left center. And when you elevate pitches in your sickle ball pitcher, the elevation or the velocity is not quite there. And it's showing with some of the hits off Trevor in the last couple of innings. Ramirez bunts it foul. So each team with five hits, but really the difference is the five hits for the White Sox, three doubles and a triple. The five hits for the A's, all singles. Drive fouls. Ramirez did the fake bunt and then swing. 
That's a great play protecting. He's doing his job, that young man, the old lefty. Got some fans in trouble Friday night, but this one protected the pitcher, although a little bit of an lay. Get in front of it. Don't be backhand of the ball. You gotta get your body down in front of it. Another bouncer foul by Ramirez. Sometimes, Ray, you watch a guy square around and try to bunt the first pitch he sees. And it looks like he has no desire to bunt. And if you're the manager, <laughs> take the bunt off. And that's exactly what Ozzie Gein did. He had him fake button swing on the second pitch. Uh, the old saying, you never put a player in a position to fail. Well, <laughs> Ramirez was in that position, at least in the first attempt to bunt. Ramirez on the afternoon, a fly ball to left field. And a strikeout swinging. That was in the fifth. But a pretty good year for Ramirez, the shortstop. He finished second in the American League Rookie of the Year balloting last year behind Evan Longoria. 21 homers and 77 RBI. So he's on pace to do about that in the homer and RBI column. Remember last year, though, he played second base. This year, he's playing shortstop. And the reason that Cabrera did not actually, I think he was offered arbitration, did not accept it, which meant that uh, Orlando Cabrera. Orlando Cabrera has ended up signing him during spring training. Right. Cabrera was the shortstop last year, Ramirez the second baseman. He's a free swinger. In fact, in that season last year that we talked about, he walked a total of 18 times. <laughs> That's it, 18 the whole season. This year, he's walked 35 times. Bounces this one. Crosby in the hole. Throws and well, he made it really closer than I thought he would. Pretty nice effort by Bobby Crosby, but Ramirez runs well and he's going to have a base hit. Brzezinski stayed at second base. Well, dangerously uh, close at first base as Everidge reached for the bar on the short hop and had to knock the ball down to keep it from going past him. Bobby, an excellent play. Not much of a chance to throw out Ramirez. And well, that play, Harold Baines almost had to knock the ball down. He's the coach. So Trevor Cahill will depart. 98 pitches, six plus innings. We'll be back. Six plus innings for Trevor Cahill. And the situation now is Jay Marshall comes in. First and second, nobody out. So Marshall comes in to face the left hand and hitting Kotze. I don't think there's any question what 
Katsay was going to do in this at bat with being the seventh inning and first and second nobody nobody out Katsay indeed tries to bunt. And the next the on deck hitter a right hander that's the right hander warming up in the bullpen. That's the perfect bunt by Katsay again to third base. So the sacrifice puts runners at second and third with one out. Now he could potentially walk next to face Potsednik, the left hander. That's possible. Or you face Nix, but you bring in Ziegler. We'll see. Ziegler's clearly ready. He's thrown enough pitches. And he was up the same time as yeah. Marshall was. Two submariners thrown side by side. Jay Marshall fourth game. All zeros. That's good. Nix hits one foul over the head of the third base coach Jeff Cox. So Marshall will face Nix. Good fastball on the inside corner. So it's 0 and 2. Nix is hit into a double play and had a sacrifice bunt. Infield halfway. Remember, Brzezinski does not run well at third, so it will have to be a fairly deep fly ball or a strikeout. And Marshall gets the big strikeout. So on three pitches, Nix is gone. About three very good pitches thrown by Jay Marshall, and of course the home run Nix hit yesterday was off Drew Gonzalez. But the submarine pitching of Jay Marshall, a little bit different look, and no contact by Nix. So said, of course, leaving a couple of runners on. Now that's the 29 look, isn't it? Yeah. The bearded one. Watch your hand. Ow. Been a lot of work during spring training by Ron Romantic with Jay Marshall just trying to lower him even more. This is when Jay was really not in camp with the athletics came up all of 2007. Stayed with the club but not last year. Crosby a one hopper straightens up throws in time. So nice job by Jay Marshall. He comes in and he works his way out of the jam. Seventh inning stretch to nothing Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen. Year, the A's beat the Chicago Cubs in the World Series. So the uniforms, both the A's and the White Sox from 2000 or from 1929. The scoring in the ball game, Scott Podsednik with an RBI triple. That was in the sixth inning. That made it a one nothing game. Three hitters later, Jim Tomey with the sacrifice fly. Podsednik would score, and that is scoring in the ball game. It's two nothing White Sox. Bottom of the seventh inning. So 2-6-0 for Chicago, 0-5-0 for 
the Athletics, AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network, AT&T, your world, delivered. Line drive, that's going to be a base hit by Norman garcia Parra. Knocked down by Todd Sedman, he quickly picks it up. So a leadoff hit for Nomar, he's two for three in the game. Well, let's hope the great job by Jay Marshall keeping a couple of runners on base instead of making it a four to nothing game, just two to nothing. Nomar starts it, change up, stays back, and gets his second hit with the other one. Similar pitch back up the middle with two strikes. This one, though, Podsednik got two, and he might be a little bit conscious of the outfield grass, the dirt, because of the bleachers. There's a line shot. That's going to get past the Pat Sednik, who plays it off the wall. Nobody's at second, so Crosby will make it. And second and third, nobody out for the Athletics. Well, maybe they're happy what Jay Marshall did, getting out of the top half of the inning. Those back-to-back -back pitches, three pitches in the inning, and Bobby Crosby jumps on it. And another high changeup from... Dankson hit so hard, came back to Potsednik, but on the move was Garcia Park getting the third easily, and Mark Kotze, the trailing first baseman, was not at second, but great swing by Bobby. So Tommy Everett steps in. Single by Garcia Parra, a double by Crosby. Away to Everidge, who's 0 for 2, a strikeout and a flyout. And we've talked about Tommy Everidge's ability to hit the ball to the right side. Well, this is a perfect time to do it, even so much as giving yourself up to the ground ball to the right side, scoring a runner, getting Crosby to third. 2 and 0. Sit on a changeup right here. Crush it. Still a 3 2 changeup in the first at bat. What a fast yeah. Yeah. and a good swing by Everett. 2 and 1. This will be pitch number 80 for John Danks. So now it's two and two. Good at bat by Everett. He hangs in there, fouls off. Tough pitch. And maybe, as you said a couple innings ago, maybe expanding his strike zone a little bit to not get a run. Well, hot hitting Mark Ellis is the on deck circle, so either way, trying to make a productive out if it's going to be one. And he swings and misses as Danks went with. Maybe a slider, yep. hard slider down and in, and he gets a big strikeout. One of the few thrown today by Not Danks, but picked a perfect time. As he took it to the back foot of uh, Tommy Everidge, swung over it, off the plate out of the strike zone. And maybe just the fact that it was a different pitch, different look. So now Danks will face Mark Ellis. Mark hits it, just foul. Matt Tishner, the third base umpire, called it foul. It wasn't fouled by a lot. Mike Diago has the look of disbelief as he's standing there. Nomar spun around as well. Well, it's hit so hard. All it has to do is go across the bag, not where it lands, but across the bag. And boy, it was just a couple of inches wow. to the foul side. And for it to be that close, 
to the foul line as Garcia Parra was reaching back on pointing back fair. I don't blame him. Right center reels a long run still on the run he's going to get there he makes the catch. Garcia Parra is going to come in to score Crosby to third the A's are on the board it's two to one. All the more reason for second and third and nobody out and. So the A's do get the sack fly would have preferred to have the double just inside the line. And that's going to take a two out hitter mistake for the A's to tie. It. Aaron Cunningham is the hitter. So Mark Ellis picks up his 41st RBI. In his 18th RBI in the month of August. He has had a terrific month. Cunningham this afternoon a base hit in the third and a pop out in the fifth. He's need a big two out hit to get Crosby home and tie up the game. Left handed hitting Adam Kennedy waits in the on deck circle. Well, Michael Wirtz was up by himself. And he's hoping to tie it. He would come in. Now uh, Greg Ziegler starting to get loose again. Now Cunningham in a 2 1 fastball's first at bat for a base hit just in the five and a half hole on the left side. Pops this one up. Jermaine died to his right. He's got it side retired. A's get a run on a couple of hits. Eighth inning coming up. It's Chicago 2 and the A's 1. Okay. In the pitch, Gordon Beckham takes a slider for a strike. Wirtz six and one with a 3.21 ERA. So works in game one of this series.
Beckham can't hold up and one and two Beckham one for two in the ball game and doubled in the fourth and then walked in the sixth. The game in Baltimore got a little out of hand. I think the Angels got a little upset. Yeah. They had too many chances <laughs> and did not score and then they really got ticked off. Angels now leading 14 to 8. They've scored six runs in the top of the 13th and they're still batting. Now full count to Beckham. Swing and a miss. 3-2 slider. You almost know it's coming, and there's nothing you can do about it. Beckham swings and misses. And Gordon Beckham, welcome to the world of Michael Words. Slider anytime, a slider that... It so much looks like a fastball. You have no chance once you make the commitment. Michael Ward said to me yesterday, he said, you notice my new pitch? What is it? Curveball. So about three curveballs on Friday. Huh. So he's adding a little twist to his repertoire. And good fastball, of course, the excellent slider. And now occasional curveball. Maybe Andrew Bailey taught it. Jermaine Dye goes around one and one. Okay. Juan Rivera has just hit a three run homer for the Angels. So it's now 17 to 8. Nine runs. In the top of the 13th for the Angels. So you're right, they did get ticked off. All this happened with two outs? A lot of it's happened with two outs. Two and two to Jermaine Dye. That is Tavio Dotel. Crosby goes for the backhand, cannot come up with it. It would have been a sensational play as it's a base hit for Jermaine Dye. Seven innings so far for John Danks. You saw Dotel in the bullpen. You see the pitch count for Danks, so we'll see if he goes out there. He is left-handed, so rubbing his right shoulder probably isn't going to do you much good. <laughs> He's rubbing his right shoulder. He is left-handed, right? Yes, he is. He has been throwing left-handed for seven <laughs> innings. Let's hope he doesn't come out and throw in the right-handed for the ninth or the eighth. Anyway. Well, Konerko, something uh, must have happened to Jim Tommy because Wirtz, a right-handed hitter, a right-handed pitcher, Jim Tommy left. And for some reason, Paul Konerko is pinch hitting. And Konerko takes the strike. Adam Kennedy is leading off the eighth for the A's, so that's probably why Octavio Dotel is slowly getting loose to pin. Now Thornton is going to join him. So our first look at Paul Canarco today. Canarco is 0 for 7 in the series. He's walked a couple times. He's 0 for his last 19. So as again figured maybe today a good day. To take most of the day off anyways. 3 and 1 to Canarco. And he has been. Not really that aggressive swing of the bat. You'd have to think that uh, it's going to be hard for him to swing at a Michael Ward's slider out of the strike zone. Normally Paul Canerco very aggressive and he would be a great candidate to swing at a miss bad slider. Like that. Although that was, might have been strike anyway.
guy takes off and balls hit to right where Cunningham still coming, still coming, and he missed it. And it's a fair ball. So Jermaine Dye, who was headed back to first, spins around and heads to second. So Cunningham had to run a long way, just kept running and running, and he was there. It just popped out of his glove. When he got there plenty of time, got settled under the ball and just missed it. And fortunately, Jermaine Dye was going back to first, and even more fortunate, only one out. Otherwise, he might score. So still a first and second. Jermaine Dye had to hustle back to second after retreating to first. A couple of good friends, former teammates, Mark Ellis and Jermaine Dye. Scottsdale, Arizona residents. Yeah. Here's Alex Rios. He's trying desperately to keep this a one run deficit. Rios takes low. Swing and a miss. Three fly balls to center field for Rios today. He goes around one and two. You know, Rios is the aggressive type of hitter that not surprising he is swinging slider thrown by Michael. Die and Konerko are the runners and that slider in the dirt. So two and two. Look by Wurtz. Now he's ready. That one slipped out of his hand. So a full count. Well, that figure is going to throw it again. And Jermaine Dye was running on the 3 2 to Conurco. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Rios is 0 for 4. Two outs here in the eighth. I think Ozzy saw the same thing we saw. Aggressive Rios and did not want to run into a double play. High slider, but the fact that it was off speed helped Michael Words get the strikeout. Buckled the knees a little bit of Rios. And now Wirtz needs to get A.J. Brzezinski and get out of this inning. Brzezinski, a couple of ground outs and a double. Up and away. A reminder, next three games, all night games against the New York Yankees. Very hot Yankees trailing this afternoon four to three. Of course, those games, if you can't come out to watch them, right here on Comcast Sportsnet California and High Definition. Swing and a miss. Yankees are ridiculously hot right now. They've won five in a row and 12 out of their last 13. That's what the board says. A.J. Wet Blanket Berzinski. We didn't say that, folks. It's up on the board. 
<laughs> and when I say board, I mean the black and white diamond vision yeah, board. Yeah, that's right. Shall we give the names of the guys, the great guys over in the? No, just leave it at that. We have nothing to do with that. Troy and David doing a great job. Diamond vision. Well, we have to ask them how they got the nickname or where that came from. Yeah. Out called as there's a ball loose out in right field. So Aaron Cunningham will track it down. Hope that was not the last bullpen ball the White Sox had. I doubt it. it just took a ride as a souvenir. Brzezinski swings at a ball in the dirt. Suzuki finishes it, and so Michael Wirtz works his way out of it, ends up striking out three in the eighth. Bottom of the eighth, the White Sox with a two to one lead over the A's. The A's will have the top of their order. John Danks back to work. And it may be a batter to batter situation now. He's going to get a one pitch out. Couldn't have asked for anything better for Danks as Kennedy grounds out. So Adam Kennedy 0 for 4. And that'll bring up Rajay Davis. Not bad. Center fielder, number 11, Rajay Davis. Another good afternoon for Rajay Davis. A walk in the first, a ground out in the fourth, a single in the sixth with a stolen base. So he's been a base a couple times. And he takes a strike on the inside corner. So Rajay with his hit today, the batting average 296. Shallow left center. Podsednik's not going to get it. And Rajay Davis is going to try for second, and he is going to be safe. Oh, oh. Nips had two chances at him, and he didn't get him either time. Ozzie Guillen's coming out to argue. So Gary Darling is going to be in the middle of it. What it looked Sh like actually, is... It was not Gary Darling, right, as far as the call was made. But as... The play was developing from up here. It looked like Rajay was going to be up by four or five feet. 
but in the slide, he had to have missed him. But Rajay just dumped one into left center. He did not stop running. He's always thinking extra bases. And once it got past Hutsednik to throw in, he was going to call him out. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was ready to pump the arm, and he must have changed his mind. Watch the umpire. <laughs> Either that he's just trying to get out of the way. <laughs> Probably a former. The catcher, number eight. Yeah. Now that was third Suzuki. base umpire Todd Tishner. The second base umpire Gary Darling actually ran out a little ways in case there was a dive and a play whether he had to make a decision on whether he caught it or not. So Tishner, the third base umpire, then went over to second and made the call. Ozzie Gian's coming out. So we'll have a pitching change. Danks goes a, goes seven in a third. No need as there was a 4 6 3 double play. Kurt Suzuki in the first inning. That was big. The A's had something going. And then a second inning, Bobby Crosby after a leadoff single by Scott Harrison, a 6 4 3 double play. So John Danks, just six ground ball outs, but two big ones. Actually, four of those in the first two innings. So Gartel, who came on Friday night, was the winning pitcher striking out the side. And the White Sox scored a run, but it was Pennington, Kennedy, and Davis that it came in and just blew away with good fastballs, all fastballs except for one slider. Seven and a third for Danks, finishes with 90 pitches. With a different call, he might still be in a game. Huh? Year for Dotel, 2.76 ERA. Lots of strikeouts. There's that fastball, and he will challenge. You know, it's kind of a sneaky fastball because it is pretty much a four seam fastball. Kind of slings it, lets it go with mid 90s velocity. It's got to be very sneaky because the hitters seem to be a little bit late with their swing. Well, Nix, at least that time, really was not holding Rajay Davis on. Could have been a situation where he knew Dotel was not going to pitch to the plate. He was just going to hold and hold. Sometimes that's. Good way to hold the runner on actually. This one's popped up. 
It's going to reach the seat. So the count one and two. Well, so far, the White Sox have been successful keeping Rajay at second because ideally, and I think he's had the opportunity to steal third. So Kurt Suzuki could drive him in from third base, but he has not attempted in the three pitches. Way outside. Suzuki 0 for 3. Now Nick's trying to hold Davis on. He's not going in another foul ball. Ziegler Bailey warming up for the A's. When you figure with the velocity of Dotel, a right handed hitter might be a little bit late with the swing, and with the big hole on the right side, it'd be a perfect shot for Suzuki to drive the ball that way to drive in the run. Marcotte shading his eyes, and he's got to step into foul territory. So Suzuki may have been trying for that hole you were talking about, but he popped it up. So two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now batting, left fielder, number 12, Scott Harrison. Now both Ziegler and Bailey are ready. Ziegler's been throwing for a while. And Isaac Gian's trotting to the mound. Harrison is the hitter. Garcia Parra in the on-deck circle. And you wonder, Ray, if that conversation right there had anything to do with Rajay Davis? In other words, let him go. Yeah. The runs, let him go. Worry about the hitter. Because if you, we've talked about situations like this, but if you're the if, if you're the White Sox, the only guy that can hurt you in this spot is the hitter. Mm -hmm. But if he's given third base, which he'll probably take. And I think they are just giving it yeah. to him. Nix is not even holding him on. But it'd be a good time to go ahead and take it because a mistake can happen. Remember in Boston when Rajay ended up driving it in the tying run because third base was given to Mark Ellis at the time. Just a bit low. One and one to Scott Hairston, who had a base hit in the second. Also got a fly ball to right field and a fly ball to center field. Maybe Raji is just waiting for Scott Harrison to turn on one of Dotel's fastball and make it a 3 2 game. To left. Did he get enough? Podsednik in front of the wall. He leaves and it's off the wall. This game is going to be tied and Harrison is going to have a double. Davis scores 2 2. Scott Harrison, I think he wanted the whole thing. It's a hanging slider. Was not the fastball. Got under it. I think he thought he got enough. But setting it going back. But setting it jumped. And maybe had it gone back to the wall and jumped straight up. Might have had a chance. He did not miss it by much. And I think maybe Harrison was grimacing because of the quad. Left quad because Bob Guerin and Walt Horn are going to go out and visit. Now the life of a starting pitcher. The Hairston running between first and second. He slowed down and we'll see if he indeed stays in the game. Well, an important run, obviously, at second with two outs. Bob Garen wants to make sure he's okay to run because he has the go ahead run. Ryan Sweeney, of course, would be ready. And, you know, Scott Harrison does not want to come out and take the chance of missing playing against his brother tomorrow night. It's three games against the Yankees.
Here's Garcia Parra. He'll try to give the A's the lead. First pitch, a strike on the outside corner. Nomar's got a couple of hits today. Scored a run in the seventh. So both starting pitchers good this afternoon, and both will go home with a no decision. One and two now to Garcia Parra. White Sox will have Ramirez, Katze, and Nix, the three scheduled hitters in the top of the ninth inning. Garcia Parra checks his swing, but he went around as they appealed to Paul Emmett. So Dotel strikes out Garcia Parra, but Scott Harrison, a two out. RBI double has tied this. For the White Sox, number 10, Alexi Ramirez. So we now have a tie game, 2-2, two -two, top of the ninth inning. So the A's will bring in Andrew Bailey. So Bailey comes in, and he faces Alexi Ramirez. Well, the no-save situation, so top of the ninth, home. Andrew Vetti, 51st appearance, 17 for 21 in save situations. This is one to try to get the A's back in the dugout and try to win it in the ninth, out of the ninth. Bailey pitched on Friday night through an inning and a strikeout. Scott Harrison has stayed in the game. He's in left field. Close pitch. Two and two to Ramirez. Now the cutter. Hard to believe that missed the strike zone. High pop up. Average near the seats and it's into the seats. Ramirez is one for three. He had a base hit in the seventh inning. for that one. Mark Ellis on the backhand. Throws in time. 
unfortunately didn't get a glove on it. Pretty good second baseman playing behind Andrew Bailey. And I think uh, Andrew just realized that. Hey, not only that, on you don't know where the ball is going to go. Yeah, and, and you know where, or at least Mark Ellis knows how to position the players based on the pitches that are being thrown. Very good. Katze takes outside. Mark Katze, a single in the third, a double, and a run scored in the sixth. And then he had a sacrifice bunt in the seventh. Swing and a miss. One and two. And that's where it's hard to believe if you're a hitter facing Andrew Bailey. You know he's a closer. I think he's going to be throwing fastball, cutter, slider, but then here comes a 12 to 6 curve. A totally different pitch from a closer. Field, Hairston back, warning track, two outs. Well, if Laura and Bill Bailey are watching this game on uh, the MLB.com, the package. Yeah. We want to thank them again for the dibs they sent to Baltimore. Five, Jason right. Bill's nice gesture. We got a chance to see him after the game and was concerned about us not being able to get dibs <laughs> back in the humid Baltimore area. But Our kind of guy. Yeah. I went shopping, bought us some dibs. They were nice and cold. So we appreciate it. I know that families are watching their son as much as possible in our telecasts. And as we say, they've raised a good one. This kid can pitch. Mm -hmm. He is a very good pitcher. Jason Nix is the hitter. One and one now to Nix, who is 0 for 2. He had a sacrifice bunt. Most strikeouts by a relief pitcher in the American League. And not just rookies. Not just yeah. rookies, that's right. Strike call, 1 and 2. So Nix. Taking his time, now he's back in the box. Breaking pitch stays high to even the count at two and two. White Sox with seven hits in the game. The A's have nine. Crosby's got it. Throw to first is no. They call him safe. Bob Guerin's coming out. Paul Emmel called Nick safe at first. I hope they play by Crosby. I don't they say don't say that Tommy Everidge came off the back too quickly. He has a tendency as a lot of first basemen will once there's going to be a close play. But Bobby Crosby with the bounced ball, I mean, still got there very quickly in the stretch. Oh wow! Not even close. And isn't it amazing that they go back to Baltimore and Ted Barrett on a similar play, <laughs> and he never touched first base. Yeah. Wow. We were worried that Everett did Nick's touch first base. Looks like he hit right in front of the bag, but regardless, he's in the air. Barely got the front edge of it, but clearly he's in the air, and the ball is in the glove. Of Tommy Everage. Now, the only thing you can think that Paul Lim was thinking the ball is bouncing, it's going to get there slower, but they hear the the ball going into the glove and the foot hitting the bag, and that wasn't even close. Now batting, number 22, Scott Plasetnik. So the White Sox 
Still alive here in the ninth, and now Scott Podsednik will step in. Podsednik one for four. Takes inside. Well, we said it about Ted Barrett. How could you miss play that badly? We said about Paul Immel. Not even close. One and one to Pod Sednik. And an RBI triple in the sixth inning and then later scored in that inning. <laughs> Nix goes. Throw to second base is that in time. And now he's saying Crosby pushed him off the bat. And here comes Bob. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a strange call. Well, Bobby's very upset. And if you see that, then you got to think there may have been another missed call. Well, what the umpire is saying, and that was Gary Darling, saying that by pushing, he's saying that Bobby Crosby pushed him off the bat because he slid. And he said, I mean, his foot was off by a foot. My goodness. And he's saying there that Crosby pushed him off the bag. No, he did not. He, did he not. just held his yeah. glove on the body of Jason Nix. His momentum carried him past the bag. So Bob Guerin has been tossed, so he might as well get his money's worth here. But Bobby Crosby did nothing more nope. than held his glove That's on it. to Nix. And just let him slide off the bat. Which and that's is really what you're supposed to do. The infielder right? does too. Just in case with the head first slide or the aggressive slide is going to slide past the bat. And this is the same crew that did the Giant oh, Dodger wow. series in, in the final game of the series. And that was a national story how bad they were. And Gary Darling threw out a manager and a fill in manager yeah. in one game. And they just got another manager. And he just threw by. Now watch the, watch the slide. Nix goes past the bat. Crosby tagged him. Stayed on the tag. Watch Nick's foot came way off the bag, and there's nothing that Bobby Crosby did to push him off the bag. But I guess when you're bad, you have to make somebody else leave. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Well, let's hope we don't have a cycle of blown calls because first and second's been taken care of in this one inning. And that's your crew chief, folks, Gary Dolan. I thought the crew chief was supposed to be the best umpire. I think so. So it's 3-1 to Podsednik, and the go-ahead run is now at second base. And there is a strike to make it a full count. So big pitch here. Gordon Beckham is in the on-deck circle. Steps off. The pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Bailey works his way out of the jam. And no damage done. Thank goodness. Yeah. Bottom of the ninth coming up. We're tied.
Well, the score tied 2-2 two to two in the uh, last of the ninth inning. And it's time for Carl Jr. in your face. And we go to the ninth with a tie score because of Scott Harrison's two-out run-scoring double off the left field wall on a hanging slider. And Dotel <laughs> kind of shifted. <laughs> threw his hands up, maybe saying to his left fielder, you didn't catch that ball? But he didn't, and Ty Waller is running the game on the bench as Bob Guerin was ejected on actually two blown calls in the same same inning, the same hitter. Hitter going to first base and next, and then the Knicks going to second. So Bobby Jenks, the White Sox closer, comes in. And the first pitch is drilled to left center, but in the ballpark, Rios grabs it so Crosby goes after the first pitch and flies out one out well, Jenks saved the game on Friday night he is 24 for 28 in save situations made it a little bit interesting as the A's put a couple of runners on base with two outs in the 10th inning he did get the final out Upside you Tommy Everett. See if Everett can get a hold of one. Send us all home happy. It's 0 for 3 this afternoon. He drives one right field. Die coming in and he makes the catch. Okay. 2007 Mark Ellis off Bobby Jenks. Eight for the tenth. That said, it, not able to catch that one either. And who's that guy? Who's that? Marco? Marco was on the scoring end of the walk-off. He was usually driving guys in. Or did for the A's. So Mark Ellis steps in, two outs. Ellis had a sacrifice fly in the seventh inning. Got the A's their first run. Line drive down the left field line into the corner. It's gone. It's gone. Ball game over. Ellis with a walk off. Just over the wall and left. Terrific second half for Mark Ellis continues.